she shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things done by Disney villains. And when everyone's super... <laughs> No one will be. For this list, we'll be looking at the most dastardly deeds perpetrated by the bad guys and gals from the House of Mouse. Spoilers ahead, friends. Which villain is the stuff of your nightmares? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Hans tries to kill Anna and Elsa. Frozen. This beloved movie managed to turn the old love at first sight trope on its head. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? It's a good thing too, because there was a time Disney was very guilty of leaning into it. Princess Anna thinks Prince Hans is in love with her, but in reality, he's just scheming to take over the kingdom of Arendelle. Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. For first-time viewers expecting the standard fairy tale formula, his betrayal comes as a total shock. Not only does he leave Anna to die after Elsa accidentally freezes her heart, he tries to murder Elsa too. No, stop! But then she doomed herself, and you were dumb enough to go after her. Please. <laughs> All that's left now is to kill Elsa and bring back Summer. Although Elsa's the one with the ice powers, Hans is the coldest character in the movie. Number 19. Randall plans to kidnap children and extract their screams. Monsters, Inc. How low would you sink to rise to the top? Well, we know how low Randall Boggs would. We're gonna act like nothing happened, understand? You just get the machine up and running, I'll take care of the kid. And when I find whoever let it out, they're dead! Oh! He's willing to kidnap kids and scare the living daylights out of them just to impress his boss. To be fair, everyone at Monsters, Inc. makes a living by terrifying children, but Randall's scream extractor takes it a step further. We're also not exactly inclined to believe he plans to get them home safe and sound after he's done scaring them half to death. Like a true villain, he's prepared to take down anyone who gets in his way, including his colleagues, Mike and Sully. You've been number one for too long, Sullivan! Now your time is up! And don't worry! I'll take good care of the kid. Number 18. Shere Khan kills Akila, the Jungle Book. Given the danger that humans pose to wildlife, we can kind of understand why Shere Khan wants to get rid of Mowgli. You're hunting ground for a few years and everyone forgets how the law works. After the tiger threatens his life, Mowgli decides to leave the jungle for the safety of the wolf pack. But this isn't enough for Shere Khan, who expected the pack to simply hand the boy over. In retaliation, he murders the pack leader in cold blood. This brutal death comes out of nowhere and cements Idris Elba's version of Khan as one of the scariest Disney villains in recent memory. Until I have the man cub, these hills are my hills. You did not respond to reason. So now you will know fear. Number 17. McLeach tries to kill Cody, the rescuers down under. Poaching animals is bad enough, but Percival C. McLeach also has no qualms about killing a little boy. In fact, he clearly seems to enjoy the prospect. It's a trap, and poaching is against the law. Trap? Where'd you get an idea like that, boy? I think you've been down in that hole for too long. When he accidentally snags Cody in one of his animal traps, he soon discovers that the boy knows how to find the beautiful and elusive golden eagle. Still, Cody refuses to betray his feathered friend, even after McLeach imprisons him. Eventually, the poacher tricks Cody into leading him to the nest. Once he captures Marahute, he tries to throw Cody into crocodile-infested waters. That is one bloodthirsty hunter. Are you ready, boy? It's time you learned how to fish for crocs. <laughs> they like it when you use live bait. Number 16. Corella Deville attempts puppy murder. 101 Dalmatians. It takes a truly evil villain to try to kill 99 puppies. And not just kill them, but skin them for coats. Corella, isn't that a new fur coat? <laughs> My only true love, darling. I live for furs. I worship furs. It's true that Corella doesn't plan to carry out the plot herself. She saves that horrifying task for her henchmen, Horace and Jasper, who at least seem a bit reluctant to go through with it. I don't care how you kill the little beast, but do it! And do it now! Oh, please, miss, now have pity, will ya? Corella is, of course, the one with the motive and the person who puts the entire plot in motion. 
Anyone who puts material items over the lives of living beings deserves a fate befitting of a Disney villain. Cruella got off easy, if you ask us. Number 15. Syndrome lures superheroes to their deaths. The Incredibles. Be careful who you disappoint. You might accidentally turn them into a supervillain. As a kid, Buddy was obsessed with Mr. Incredible. Now, we might be able to nab him if we set up a perimeter. You mean he got away? Well, yeah. Skippy here made sure of that. Incredible! You're not affiliated with me! As an adult, he's obsessed with making superheroes obsolete, and he'll kill as many of them as he has to in the process. Buddy, now the supervillain Syndrome, tricks the supers into coming to his tropical island to fight his powerful weaponized robot. This enables him to constantly improve the machine until it's ready for its ultimate test, Mr. Incredible. We don't know exactly how many Super Syndrome's robot has killed, but it appears to be at least dozens. I'll be a bigger hero than you ever were! You mean you killed off real heroes so that you could pretend to be one? Oh, I'm real! Real enough to defeat you! Number 14. Robert Callahan starts the fire that kills Tadashi, Big Hero 6. When a fire breaks out at the San Francisco Institute of Technology Showcase, Hiro's brother Tadashi, in a truly selfless act, rushes back inside to save Professor Callahan. Tadashi, no! Callahan's in there. Someone has to help. While Callahan makes it out no problem, it's Tadashi who's killed when the building explodes. Unbeknownst to everyone, Callahan was the one who started the fire, so he could steal Hero's microbots and get revenge on the man responsible for his daughter's disappearance. But T Tadashi, just let him die. Give me the mask, Hero. He, he went in there to save you! That was his mistake! When Hero and the gang track him down, he tries to kill them too, and almost succeeds. Professor Callahan is so obsessed with payback that he doesn't care how many innocent people he hurts. Number 13. Ursula imprisons merpeople as hideous polyps, the Little Mermaid. Ursula pretends to help people, but in reality, she takes advantage of those in desperate situations. Sweet child, that's what I do. It's what I live for, to help unfortunate merfolk like yourself. When they can't keep their end of the bargain, she turns them into tiny monsters that she keeps imprisoned in her garden. They can't move or speak, and seem to spend all of their time writhing in agony. Now it's happened once or twice. Someone couldn't pay the price, and I'm afraid I had to rake them across the gold. As we soon find out, the contracts aren't even fair because Ursula cheats to get what she wants. From the looks of it, she's done this to dozens of merpeople, and there's no telling how long some of them have been trapped. Plus, it doesn't do a whole lot for the decor of her lair, does it? Number 12. Lotso leaves the other toys to be incinerated. Toy Story 3. Lotso Hug and Bear seems cuddly and friendly on the outside, but behind the scenes, he rules Sunnyside Daycare with an iron fist. You think you're special, cowboy? You're a piece of plastic. You were made to be thrown away! This backfires when Woody, Buzz, and the gang refuse to submit to his dictatorship, and he ends up at the dump with all of them. As a conveyor belt carries them toward an incinerator, Woody helps Lotso escape so he can reach the emergency stop button. Instead of helping save everyone, he leaves them all to die. Just push it! Push it! Push it! Where's your kid now, Sheriff? No! No! Lotso! This leads to what is probably one of the darkest scenes ever shown in a kid's movie. Lotso sentences his fellow toys to a fiery doom, even though saving them would have been as easy as pushing a button. Number 11. Governor Ratcliffe tries to start a war. Pocahontas. Greed can be a powerful motivator. Governor Ratcliffe believes that the Powhatan tribe is hiding gold, and he's prepared to do anything to get it. That includes trying to wipe out the entire tribe. It's the gold! They have it, and they don't want us to take it from them. Well, I'll just have to take it by force then, won't I? When John Smith is captured, it's just the excuse Ratcliffe's been waiting for to rally the white settlers and declare war. Even a truce between the two parties isn't enough to stop him. In an attempt to assassinate Chief Powhatan, he shoots John Smith instead. Needless to say, this doesn't go over well with the other colonists. Never should have listened to you! Get the gun! Oh, 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 me, I shall dare you! Put him in chains! Uh, I'll see you all hang for this! Number 10. Mother Gothel kidnaps, falsely imprisons, and attempts murder. Tangled. 
I see a strong, confident, beautiful young lady. <laughs> oh look, you're here too! An ancient woman kept immortal by a magical flower, Gothel is desperate to stay young, and possibly alive, when the flower is given to the kingdom's ailing queen. When its powers are passed on to the queen's daughter Rapunzel, Gothel kidnaps and imprisons her in a tower to hoard these powers, using psychological abuse and manipulation to keep the girl prisoner. You are not leaving this tower! Ever! When Flynn appears ready to take Rapunzel away from her, Gothel resorts to stabbing him and holds his life hostage to ensure Rapunzel stays with her forever. We're all for living longer, but not at the cost of others' lives. The world is dark and selfish and cruel. Number 9. Lady Tremaine and Her Daughters Mistreat Cinderella. Cinderella. But I was only trying to- Silence! The stepmother and stepsisters of the title character, Lady Tremaine and her daughters are incredibly cruel to Cinderella, heaping psychological abuse on the poor girl while also treating her like a servant. But don't just stand there. Bring up the breakfast trays at once. Their behavior isn't even motivated by some relatable purpose, though, instead being petty jealousy over Cinderella's natural beauty and charming personality, which she can hardly help. What is relatable, though, is the neglect and mistreatment she experiences at their hands, since all too many in the real world can unfortunately empathize with her. You clumsy little fool! Number 8. The Coachman Sells Children Into Slavery Pinocchio Would you blokes like to make some real money? <laughs> An opportunistic and greedy man, the coachman is presumably the owner of Pleasure Island, an amusement park frequented by young boys, who then magically turn into donkeys after enough time spent there. The coachman then imprisons and sells the transformed children into forced labor in mines and circuses when they can no longer speak, dooming them to silent, nightmarish slavery for the rest of their lives in the name of profit. Well, I do! Worst of all, unlike many Disney villains, the coachman is never stopped or punished for his deplorable crimes. I'm collecting stupid little boys. Number 7. Gaston extorts Belle into marriage, rallies villagers against the Beast, and tries to kill him. Beauty and the Beast. Do you know who that little wife will be? Let me think. You, Belle. Gaston's quite the guy, just not in a good way. The town hero may be one of a kind, but we're glad of that fact given that the creep imprisons Belle's father to extort our young book lover into marriage. Gaston goes further when Belle rejects him, though, using his charisma to gather the town against Beast. And when that goes awry and he loses to the transformed creature, the treacherous lout even stabs Beast in the back after being spared. This last act quickly proves his undoing, though. Get out. Number 6. Hades tries to have Hercules killed as an infant. Hercules. Ah, oh, there's the little sunspot. The Lord of the Dead may be affable, but he's definitely not the nicest god around. While consulting the fates about his plans to take over Mount Olympus, Hades learns his plan won't work if Hercules grows to adulthood. This leads him to order his minions to murder the young godling by giving him a potion to make him mortal, and therefore vulnerable to death. Is this kid gonna mess up my hostile takeover bit or what? What do you think? There is a slight flaw as Herc retains his super strength, but it's still attempted child murder. It may not have even been the first time Hades tries it. After all, that spiked pacifier didn't look all that child-friendly. Here is a sucker for the little sucker. Ah, here you go. You're just... Number 5. Maleficent Tries to Murder Aurora and Philip. Sleeping Beauty. I, too, shall bestow a gift on the child. Maleficent takes being snubbed for a party way too seriously. Of course, given what Aurora's father Stefan did to her in Maleficent, her reaction is a bit more understandable. When the evil fairy isn't invited to Princess Aurora's christening, she gate crashes it anyway, cursing the infant child with death albeit in 16 years' time after pricking her finger on a spindle, and the curse is altered by one of the good fairies. Sweet princess, if through this wicked witch's trick a spindle should your finger prick. Maleficent eventually succeeds in putting Aurora to sleep, and then attempts to kill her would-be rescuer Prince Philip. Granted, she's evil and murderous through and through, but if she needs to transform into a cool dragon while she goes about doing bad things, we're not complaining. <laughs> Number 4. Ernesto poisons Hector and steals his songs. Coco. Hector, I never meant to take credit. 
We made a great team. A charismatic musician, actor, and symbol of Mexican pride, Ernesto de la Cruz is far more sinister than his handsome visage could suggest. But I could not have done it differently. One cannot deny who one is meant to be. When he was just starting out, Ernesto worked with his friend Hector, who was his songwriter. However, Hector wanted to quit so he could return to his family. Rather than give up the songs that led to his success, Ernesto murders Hector by poisoning him and steals credit for his songs. Stealing credit for your best friend's accomplishments is bad enough, but killing them to get away with it is another level of despicable. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to seize your moment. Number 3. Scar Commits Fratricide – The Lion King the younger brother of the King Mufasa, Scar saw his ambition to succeed his sibling dashed by the birth of his nephew Simba. But in order to attain his lofty goals, Scar is willing to sink to low depths indeed. Kill Mufasa? Precisely. The villainous lion schemes with the hyenas to lure Mufasa into a stampede by putting Simba in danger. Yet when this fails to kill his brother as intended, Scar takes a more direct approach, throwing Mufasa off a cliff to be trampled. We've seen plenty of killers so far, but killing your own family, especially a sibling, is particularly deplorable. Long live the king. Number 2. The Huns Raise a Village, Mulan The Hun army, led by the merciless Shan Yu, invade China after the Great Wall is built seeking to assert their strength and to conquer the land. Soon after entering the country, Shan Yu deduces that the army is camped near a village by examining a doll. This doll came from a village in the Tongshao Pass, where the Imperial Army is waiting for us. The army then proceeds to raise the village to the ground, slaughter its people, as well as the army nearby. The brutal reality of war and civilian casualties is horrific enough, and seeing it in a Disney film is jarring, but incredibly affecting. Search for survivors. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Evil Queen tries to kill Snow White, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Envy is one of the seven deadly sins for a reason. Old Granny knows a young girl's heart. Not take the apple, dear. And make a wish. The Horned King wants to take over the world with an army of the undead, the Black Cauldron. This scene gave a lot of 80s kids nightmares. All the dead of centuries past. Never has anyone created an army like this. Madame Medusa kidnaps an orphan, the rescuers. We don't have to say stealing children is bad, right? I'll never get adopted. Adopted? What makes you think anyone would want a homely little girl like you? Screenslaver almost crashes a yacht into a city. Incredibles 2. If not for the heroes, thousands might have died. We have breaking news. While there is still no radio contact, the ship has changed direction and is heading towards land at a high rate of speed. Charles Muntz has probably killed other explorers. Up. His obsession with the giant bird got completely out of hand. Pretty good stories. A surveyor making a map, a botanist cataloging plants. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Claude Frollo kills Quasimodo's mother, lusts over Esmeralda, and nearly commits mass murder. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. How dare you defy me! The fanatical Claude Frollo is easily one of Disney's baddest baddies. Despite his apparent piousness, he uses his faith as a justification for his evil deeds, which makes him especially loathsome. And who knows, our lord works in mysterious ways. Frollo's zeal to persecute others is first seen when he murders Quasimodo's mother on the steps of Notre Dame. Even raising the boy he orphaned doesn't redeem him, as he still looks to blame others after feeling lust for the first time for Esmeralda. And his haste to blame her and her people leads him to respond with an attempted genocide against them, or at least mass murder. And tomorrow at dawn, I attack with a thousand men. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. 
and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.